I mean, the speeding ticket costs a couple hundred dollars. There's a penalty associated with doing it. Here you sa it says that the sheriff shall do it. It's mandatory. He and shall, shall do it. shall does not mean may. Yeah, it's mandatory. And yet, if he doesn't do it, what's the fine? What's the penalty? Does he go to jail or does he pay money? Which is it? It's neither. Therefore, he can just, uh, he can just not do it like, it like it's not even there. So let's read uh, Penal Code 872. 872A, if, however, it appears from the examination that a public offense has been committed and there is sufficient cause to believe that the defendant is guilty, the magistrate shall make or endorse on the complaint an order signed by him or her to the following effect, quote, it appearing to me that the offense in the within complaint mentioned or any offense, according to the fact, stating generally the nature thereof, has been committed, and, there, and that there is sufficient cause to believe that the within-named A.B. is guilty. I order that he or she be held to answer to the same. Now, how many times have, have we ever seen a complaint issued against somebody for a violation where the judge signed it? because the uh, complainant, the person who witnessed the crime, went before the judge and swore out a complaint and the judge signed it. Man, you never That's even... never, never, yeah. ever. So they're violating their own law and these laws are put there because they're trying to be in compliance with the Constitution. Trying so to make it appear that, that they're, they're in, compliance. in compliance with the Constitution. So if you're gonna be in compliance with the Constitution, you have to do these things, you know, no, no warrant shall issue except upon, upon uh, probable cause, sworn to. All right, then let's move on to the Fourth Amendment, which is the basis of an arrest, right? I mean, you can't be arrested unless it's in line with the Constitution. Of course, if you don't know your constitutional rights and you don't demand your constitutional rights, and you agree to whatever they do, then they can do whatever they want because we all know failure to object is to agree. Failure to deny is to agree. So when they say, hey, stand over here and you stand over there and you don't say I object, guess what? You're you just agreed. Yeah, so now let's, control. let's read what, what the requirements for the complaint because the complaint is really the sworn affidavit that you trespassed upon somebody. Quote, even when the person who makes the constitutionally required oath or affirmation is a lawyer, the only function that she performs in giving sworn testimony is that of a witness, quote. The Fourth Amendment requirement that arrest warrants be based, quote, upon probable cause support supported by oath or affirmation, quote, a requirement that may be satisfied by an indictment returned by a grand jury. In other words, the grand jury doesn't actually have to um, do anything other than hear the evidence to re return an indictment, but not by the mere filing of criminal charges in an unsworn information signed by the prosecutor. And that is in Kalina versus Fletcher, U.S. 522, U.S. 118. That's a Supreme Court decision. And what he's saying is, when you go to court and you get charged, you ask to see the verified sworn complaint. If they don't show it to you, they didn't, you didn't have an arraignment. You don't have anything to plead to. The only thing you can plead to is a complaint. Now, what they're saying is that the complaint better be made by the person who witnessed it. In other words, if the sheriff or policeman or, the, or you know, his information isn't the the complaining party who signs that a warrant shall issue the arresting officer then what is it it's hearsay it says right there you can it has to you have to be the actual witness and almost all the time the uh, district attorney will sign it was the district attorney at the scene when you were arrested and can swear to it absolutely not okay so it's hearsay evidence and and what we're doing here is we're providing you with the ideas behind how to argue against these uh, these supposed laws that they're enforcing using their own codes, which, you know, as a sovereign, you don't have to abide by these codes. But if you were like an employee at Walmart, if you're an employee at Walmart, do you have to obey the policy of Walmart? Absolutely. If you don't obey the policy of Walmart, you're fired. You're fired. So if you're a government official, what's the policy of the state? 
the written codes and whatnot. That's the policy yeah, of the state. You don't follow them, guess what? You, are, <laughs> you have to follow the policy, but as the sovereign, I don't. Mm -hmm. So I'm pointing out the codes that you're not following and you're violating, just so you know we can be clear. The uh, courts and the uh, DA's office are acting like gangsters. It's a, Mafia pri it's a pri private group of thugs with guns because they're not obeying the law. So if they're not obeying the law, what are they? They're outlaws.